In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some old laptops. Now, these laptops were actually buried away in someone's closet and they were going to throw them away, but we don't like to waste tech here on the channel. We're going to take these two laptops and see if we can get one to work. So the first laptop we're going to look at is actually this one. Now, both laptops are X Office Dell laptops, so specification wise, they're not probably great and they are a little bit old. This one is the oldest and unfortunately is in the worst condition. We just open up the lid we can see that it actually has a smashed screen so we're not really going to try and repair that today what we're going to do is we're going to keep this machine because it's a little bit older i believe it's an dell latitude e5400 and it has something like a core 2 duo in it so we're going to use this one as a donor machine in case there's any parts we can pinch for this one this one on the other hand is in a little bit better condition we have a perfectly fine screen there's no cracks or anything and i do believe it works we've been told that it works we have all the keys apart from the little thumb pad that's sitting in the middle. That's actually missing, but who uses them? Everything does seem to work on it and it seems to be a bit of a complete unit. So this is the one that we're gonna be using. And this one is a Dell Latitude E5410. It's slightly newer than this old one here and it should house an Intel Core i3. Or at least that's what the sticker says on the front. So we're hoping that we do have an Intel Core processor in here and somebody hasn't just randomly put a sticker on the machine because it will actually make it a pretty decent machine. The first thing we need to do though is see if the machine will actually boot. So obviously testing it straight away, we've got no power at all. So it's probably got a dead battery, but we do have a plug. So let's plug it in and see what we get. Now plugging the machine in, we can see if we can get any power. We've got a blue light and we're getting an indicator here somewhere. Oh, the blue light's gone off again. Come back on and we're getting a battery flashing light and we've got no signal at all. There's no bios screen or anything coming up oh we do have something oh yes we do so it has actually started to boot it's doing something but we've got invalid configuration press f1 to continue let's see what happens and we've got a no boot device found so that obviously means that we're probably missing an os or a hard drive but what we'll do is we'll shut it down we'll open up the laptop and we'll see if and make sure everything's in there to open up this machine, it's pretty simple. If we just knock the battery out first, and we don't really want to keep this because it's a bit old, I might actually swap it off this old laptop here because it looks a bit of a better battery. So we'll put that one on the side as long as it does work. And then we'll take the bottom plate off. We already know that we are missing a screw here. So hopefully we can pinch one out of the old machine and that will help complete it at least. But what we need to do is just pop the bottom off there put that to the side and take a look inside the machine. So, so far we seem to have everything that we need. We have a processor and by the look of it, it is looks or it does look like an Intel core. We can actually read it in there. Yes, it's an Intel i3 350M, not the most powerful uh, processor in the world and it is a first gen, but it does mean that we can upgrade it because it's actually got a removable slot. We have two sticks of memory and I'm not sure what these are, but we'll have a look. Uh, so that's a one gig stick and I'm going to assume that the other is going to be identical. So probably a two gig machine. But yes, they're Samsung DDR3 units and they're one gig a piece. So that's two gig of memory in the machine. Again, not the greatest for modern operating systems, but it is upgradable, particularly if it is DDR3, which it is. And that's because DDR3 is pretty cheap now, so we can get that later on. In terms of hard drive, we are missing all the screws from this little bay. If we slide it out, of course, we don't have a hard drive. And you tend to find that with X office machines, just like these, they remove the hard drives because they don't want their data gone. But that's easy fix. We can easily put a hard drive in. Now, the first thing we're going to do is pinch the battery off this one because I do believe it's a little bit better and it's not one of those bulky things that stick out. I'm not sure how much charge these actually have in them, but this is a Dell official one as well. And by the looks of this one, no, that's like a third party one. So we'll stick with the original Dell make sure that it's fully compatible and we'll stick that in there. So we've got our battery in now. All we need to do is find a hard drive. And for this, we're gonna use one of our SSDs that we've got that we generally use with builds just to see if they're running. And we'll use that and we'll see if we can actually get into Windows. Now the SSD we're using is a Samsung solid state drive. It's only a 120 gigabyte, but it has an operating system on it and it needs to go in that way. So let's put this in here. That should just lock in like that. Drop it in and slide it across. We won't put the screws in yet. We'll pinch all of that kind of stuff later. It doesn't need the screws to actually uh, work. So we'll see if we can actually get it to boot into Windows now. So now that we've got a hard drive in, we'll see if it will actually boot into Windows. I don't think that it'll be the fastest machine in the world, particularly with the processor that it's got. 
and the only two gigs of RAM. Um, and this hard drive does have Windows 10 on it. So we'll see how fast it is when we get there, if it will even load it at all. We're just currently going through the BIOS boot up. Obviously here we've got the Latitude E5410 series. It's still got invalid configuration, but we will just skip that for now. Um, hopefully once it's booted, that will actually sort itself out. If not, we'll have to go into the BIOS and these Dells can be a bit, little bit finicky when you actually get to a BIOS screen because they have weird passwords and things and you have to use cracks to be able to do it. But if we need to do that, we'll figure it out at the time. But it does seem to be booting up. We are actually getting into Windows and here we are. We've actually booted into Windows. So let's just log into the machine and there we have it. We've actually got into the Windows. So it is an old laptop. It wasn't working previously or we were told that it wasn't working. They were working once upon a time, but it was supposed to be a non-working device and we've already got it up and running as it is. It's going to be a pretty slow machine and if we just have a quick navigate around, just opening up things like the uh, Explorer and the Windows, it, it's, it's a bit slow. So what we'll do is we'll hook this up to a capture device and then you'll be able to see things a little bit closer. So we've now got our machine running through our capture device, so you'll be able to see things a little bit easier. And as you can see, we've got it on the screen here. I'm not 100% sure what resolution yet, but when you look at the larger monitor here, we've actually got black lines down the side. So it's obviously not going to fit more modern resolutions, but it's working for now and it's showing a picture. We can actually adjust the resolution of the screen going out, but we have had to have a little bit of a weird setup because these laptops only have VGA output, no HDMI output. And to be able to go to our HDMI capture card, we've had to actually use one of our devices that we got that will convert VGA to HDMI. They're actually pretty cool and as you can see they're working fine but now that we're in Windows if we do a little bit of a navigation around we can see that things are a little bit slow. We've got on this hard drive MSI Afterburner, Cinebench, Steam. So of course as with all things on this channel we're going to actually see can we actually game on this machine. Now I'm not expecting too much from two gigabytes of RAM and a first gen i3 processor. I don't even believe that those first gen i3s even have hyper threading or anything like that but we're going to try something anyway because why not it's pretty fun. Now of course due to the low spec of this system there's only one game that we can turn to to see if we can even play a game at all and that game is Half-Life 2. Now Half-Life 2 will pretty much run on anything so if it doesn't actually run on an old system for us then we probably don't have any chance of anything else running and as we can see we have actually managed to get into the menu. I'm pretty surprised that this machine's actually playing it this far and we're currently in the menu getting around 60 frames per second but we'll drop into the settings and we'll have a look and see what we're actually running at. Now in the video settings, the native resolution of this laptop is 1280 by 800. So that's obviously what the laptop screen's running, which means that the game's probably getting the best chance it can because that's near 720p. We'll drop into the advanced, see what we've got. So everything's currently on high with shader detail on low, simple reflections, no anti-analyzing, and our vertical sync is disabled. So it's pretty much kept the settings from when we've previously used this hard drive before, but it's actually made a little bit of adjustment because we tend to run this all on high, but we'll stick with what it's got and we'll see what kind of frames we get in game. Loading times on this probably are a little bit long, but this game tends to be very well optimized. So hopefully the two gig of RAM isn't gonna give us too much hassle. We're gonna get in there. And here we are now inside the game. We're currently running at around 24, 25 frames per second. Oh, it's just jumped up to 30. And if we reset our stats, we can see that, okay, the stats resetting is not really working at the moment, but we're currently running at an average of 32 frames per second. It's not the smoothest of gameplay, particularly when it's on the big monitor, but when it's on the little monitor, it's not too bad. It seems a bit playable. So we'll just run through this kind of time and we'll see what we kind of get. You know, as things are starting to happen and move around, we are getting a few dips, but Obviously we're getting a 30 frame per second kind of experience now. So that's kind of like a really old console. So it's not too bad. I'm really surprised that we can even do this on the laptop. We're getting under attack now and I'm gonna suspect that our uh, frames per second, once things start to really take off, are gonna actually um, tank a little bit. But <laughs> in actual fact, they've gone up a bit. When we go inside buildings, things have gone up a bit more. We'll run around, we'll see if we can actually kill something. There's some bad guys somewhere shooting at us. Something's happening. Oh, there they are. But it's not the greatest experience at the moment due to as things are moving and we're getting under firefights and things like that. We are losing a bit of frames per second and it's stuttering quite a bit. Um, the 1% lows are currently still sat at zero, but we can't really reset the counter. But if we drop back to the menu, let's try the game in low settings, see if we can actually boost that up a bit or at least the smoothness of the game. So we've got to 
the settings we'll drop everything to uh, medium for now we'll leave shade of detail on low simple reflections medium medium and we'll see if it just gives us just enough to actually get a smoother gameplay now resuming the game with medium settings things have smoothed just a little bit we've not actually got any more in terms of frames per second in real time or in average but the game does feel a little bit smoother so i think it's actually quite playable you could play this game like this it's actually pretty cool that you can now that we know that we can actually play half-life 2 on this little laptop that we technically got for free and was going to be thrown out it really does go to show that you can actually play some games like this and there's a lot of old games out there that you can play on a laptop just like this but let's try something a little bit newer and see what it actually gets give ourselves some baselining because this laptop is actually upgradable and in a future video we might actually just do that so make Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to check that out. So the next game we're going to test is another bit of a favourite of ours, particularly when it comes to old hardware, and that is the 2013 version of Tomb Raider. Now the game is extremely well optimised, it's pretty old, and it should generally run on pretty much anything. Unfortunately not on this laptop, even in the menu, and the menu on this game is actually pretty intense because it is kind of like an in-game thing in the background. We're getting an average of four frames per second. That obviously means that this game is going to be completely unplayable when we get in there. But we'll just double check the settings if we can actually get there because of how slow it is. And we'll see what it's actually set to at the moment. Hopefully it's not set to high. Well, maybe hopefully it is and we can actually drop it down and get a little bit more out of it. But I don't think we're going to get that much at all. Particularly when we're really struggling to get through the menus here. We are clicking things and it's not really reacting to anything. For some reason, it's it's such a delay on the keys that we're going into lots of different um, menus. But let's try to get to the options. Right, the options are actually loading. We'll try to get to graphics. No, that's gameplay. So we've, uh, we've gone to the wrong uh, menu there because it's just such a delay on the actual mouse coming over. But what I want to do is try and actually get to running a benchmark. And then that will also give us a bit of a baseline for when we want to come and do some more work to this machine later on. Okay, so we've finally made it into the settings menu and as we can see, it's actually pretty much on low anyway. We're on the uh, 1280 by 800 resolution, 60 Hertz, V-Sync is off. We are in full screen and we've got exclusive full screen. We've got a bit of motion blur on, so we'll turn that off. We'll turn off the screen effects as well. We'll try to turn off everything that we actually can possibly do if it actually keeps up with the are clicking which is not doing a very good job of at the moment and then we will apply this eventually as you can see the current quality is on low so we don't need to go to the advanced there's not a lot we can do in there and we'll try now to get back to the benchmark and see if we can run the benchmark we finally managed to actually get the benchmark to start. It's currently loading up the game and we're really showing where the machine has got its failures. Straight away, we're actually using a lot of RAM on this one. So we're currently using around, well, it keeps going up and down, but under its peak stages, it's using around 1.6 gigabytes of the two gigabytes. So there's not a lot left there. The CPU's actually holding out pretty well. So the CPU is currently running at around 38, 39, 40%, that kind of thing. So there's actually a little bit of life left in this CPU. It's not too bad. And its temperatures are perfectly fine, even for a laptop. It's at 58, 57, around 60 degrees on average. So it's actually working pretty well. And I'm pretty pleased that the fan works in this system because that would have been pretty much a bit of a nightmare when you try to game if the system's always overheated. The biggest thing when actually trying to game, and we're really going to see this once the benchmark shows and it's taken a while to actually load still, is obviously the GPU. These laptops were built with, I believe it's the Intel HD graphics. There's no real number around that and they're pretty poor and they were back in the day. So now that the benchmark has actually started, we're seeing a very stuttery screen. It's not very clear at all. And we're getting around an average of five frames per second, but we'll leave this going and we'll see what kind of score we get at the end. One eternity later. So now that our test is actually finished and it took a long time to actually get this to happen, we can obviously see some of the benchmark statistics. As a minimum frames per second, we got a 3.3, a maximum we got a 5.8, and on average we got 4.7. Now 4.7 clearly is not a frames per second that you can play a game comfortably at. So there's a lot of work to do to this laptop to get it up to speed. I'm not even sure if actually upgrading the system itself is really gonna make that much of a difference when it comes to gaming. And that's because the thing that's really holding it back is the GPU, but obviously any upgrade is gonna be good for it. 
in other things, particularly around navigating Windows, and it could be a great YouTube slash homework kind of machine. So now that we know that we've got a laptop up and running and working and we've managed to save something from the tip, we're actually really pleased about it. This laptop here, we're going to salvage a few little parts from this like screws and anything that we can actually do. We'll probably strip the memory out of it, take the processor out of it because I do believe these are removable as well and we'll store them for another day because you never know when something like this is going to turn up and somebody may need a new processor or maybe a slightly upgraded processor just like we need for this one. In the meantime we're going to actually start going out there and looking for some parts for this laptop. I do believe because it's a first gen system parts for this are going to be super cheap so hopefully we can get together some parts that will not only just improve the overall base of the machine but we want to actually get it gaming better and we have a few ideas for that too so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see us and our journey with our latitude and see if we can get it to game like a brilliant machine. Don't forget to like this video and let us know in the comments below do you have an old machine and what have you done to it to get it to game better and give us some inspiration for us in the future. But until then we'll catch you in the next one.